Today we are beginning the field test for the Jane Davenport watercolor set and this is the Brights collection and you guys can check out my unboxing and swatching video if you are interested in that and we're going to be completing our field test on this beautiful Fabriano watercolor paper and I use it for a lot of my field tests but not all of them but it is a high quality artist paper I figure I'll give these paints the best chance I can and we need to begin with a sketch and since some of you guys have let me know that you like watching me draw I'll go ahead and do that on camera so <clears throat> Sorry, so for this portion of the video, I am going to use a mechanical pencil and I've put a little rubberized grip on it to make it a little more comfortable in my hands. And I have 2H lead in here. And I wanna sketch something that takes advantage of these colors here. So now that we have the base drawing done, it's time to ink and we want to ink with something that is going to be waterproof. So I'm probably going to grab a Sakura of America FB Pigma and I'll check with you guys in a minute. So next up we need to ink this and I'm going to ink it like I said using a Sakura of America Pigma FB and you can find a link in the description below to where you can get your own. And first I'm going to just tighten up her fingers a little bit or try to. What's strange is I added this grip so that it would be more comfortable for me to draw and while I get used to it, it's actually very much in the way. So. So next we need to let this dry fully. So I'm going to let this cure for 24 hours before I even begin to erase it. Hey guys, today we're doing the field test for the Jane Davenport Brights palette. We're going to paint this cute little illustration, but the first thing we have to do is we have to erase that background. So I will do that and I'll check back in with you guys. All right, guys, so we're going to begin with an overall tonal wash, and we're also going to begin by spritzing our palette with some clean water just to get those pans activated. Already uh, attached this piece that I'm working on to a secure surface using some low-tack blue painter's tape. 
And unfortunately, I don't think I can work with these quite the way I would with artist grade watercolors. So I'm just gonna do my best and we'll figure it out as we go along. So I've grabbed some yellow and with a big natural quill, I'm just gonna go ahead, ooh, that is too yellow. Let's see if we can, because we just want a tone. We don't want like yellow, we just want a yellow glaze. In fact, I might go grab some paper towels and lift some of this up. All right, I picked up some of that color, so it's not so intense and it's just more of a nice, warm, sort of sunny color. And I'm going to let that dry and I'm gonna go ahead and start to activate the sky blue and I'm just gonna grab 70s eyeshadow and I'm just gonna refer to these colors by the colors, uh, the names Jane Davenport has listed for them on the palette. And I'm not, as I said in the unboxing video, I'm really not a fan of her naming scheme. I think it sounds kind of juvenile to be honest, but I'm gonna roll with it. All right, so that has started to dry. I'm going to use that big quill brush again to apply the first layer. And I'm going to work it darker than this, but we have to start somewhere. And like I say on my tutorials, it's better to better to go too light than too dark. We'll mix in some color almost directly from the pan. And when I start working in greater detail, I'll pull in so you guys can see what I'm up to. And I'm just sort of letting it do what it wants to do. Some wet into wet diffuse blending. And we'll let that dry as well. All right guys, so that's had a chance to dry. I'm actually fairly satisfied with how that looks. So rather than continue to work it, I'm just gonna move on along. I'm going to go ahead and get some color on that sun. Do you guys like my nice clean palette? I have a tutorial for getting all that gross gunk off your palette coming up. Or rather, I guess it should be up by the time y'all are seeing that. All right. So you guys probably can't see it super well, but that yellow is actually a very nice yellow. And we wanna make kind of a yellow ochre color. And there aren't really any browns in this set. So we're gonna grab a little bit of indigo. That's more green than we wanted. Let's warm that up with some of that Frida, which is like a warm red. Oh, this is why I shouldn't be allowed to mix my own colors. 10 years and a bunch of paint later, I end up with a decent sand color, which you guys can't see because I am all pulled in. At least decent enough, a workable sand color. Keep in mind too, watercolor does dry lighter than it goes down. Use a little water, blend that out a little bit. All right, and I lied to you guys, I'm gonna go back into that sky. Grab a little of both blues, mix it over there in that well. And up here at the highest point in the sky, just gonna add another layer of blue. And then using some questionably clean water, just gonna blend it out a little bit. There we go, looking good, looking good. And then I'm gonna go switch my water out for some clean water and give this a chance to dry and then we'll mix her skin tone. And zoom in so you guys can see. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, now that I have a cup of clean water, we're gonna go ahead and mix our skin tone. And we're gonna start, I think, with Buzzy, which is yellow. 
and Frida, which is sort of a dark, like a lipstick red. Oh, that was too much. This is gonna be hard. This is gonna be like that Daniel Smith challenge where, let's grab some. Actually, I'm not necessarily set on any particular skin tone, so that might work. It's a good thing I'm not trying to re recreate a particular Kara, uh, Kara, character like Kara or Naomi because we'd be mixing all day. It's kind of the, the challenge with that Daniel Smith six color essentials challenge I shared with you guys is that I have to really break out my color theory. But I managed and it's made me a lot more confident knowing I can mix what I need. So, and this isn't a bad Caucasian skin tone either. Not that that was necessarily immediately what I was going for, but you know what, sure. I really don't feel like mixing skin tones all night. Honestly, it doesn't even have to be a Caucasian skin tone. It really depends on how I handle blush and how I handle her hair and her eyes because it's a skin tone that could work for Asian people or Hispanic people or uh, certain Middle Eastern people. And you can always layer a lot darker. All right, now let that layer dry as well. Let's zoom in so you guys can see. All right, guys, that has had a chance to dry. So we're going to go in here with Butterfly and we're just going to add a little bit of water. Don't, not quite ready for the full saturation. It's always nice when our field tests can be used as tutorials too. Nice little twofer. And I am not doing a good job of it, but I am trying to leave some of the white of the paper to give the effect of like sunlight on the water. Not as bad as I thought. Then we're gonna go ahead and get started painting her blanket. So we're gonna grab some ladybug which I'll zoom out so you guys can see. It's a pretty run-of-the-mill bluish red. In fact, all of the reds are blue influenced. All of the pinks in the set are blue influenced. So it's not really an ideal set. So some ladybug, and then we'll grab some of the dark green, which is called mermaid. Give those a chance to dry. And then we're gonna give her a really fun colored bathing suit. So we're gonna grab the color they call best friend, which is just, <sighs> it's something y'all, it's something. I swear these are all like nail polish colors from when I was 13. And I used to like hit up Old Navy and buy like all of their glitter nail polishes. I swear I had like 30 glitter nail polishes and adult me is not much different. There For a while there I was getting like all the cheap Kylie Jenner nail polishes from Walgreens because there were a lot of big glitter nail polishes, which I love. But these colors in the bright set all seem to be named after nail polishes from the 2000s and the late 90s. Maybe that's her inspiration. Just wanna get back to those days, huh, Jane? You and me both. Standard for fashion was a bit lower then. And what kind of ice cream? I kind of want to give her like pink ice cream. I kind of think that's fun, but we just did her bathing suit in pink and I'm feeling lazy and I don't really want to have to mix an ice cream color. <sighs> maybe, no, we've already got like a lot of yellow going on. I don't know, maybe this like super vibrant green, at least it would stand out. So it's more like a fun flavor than like a real flavor. And then I'm just gonna do the briefest swipe of ink to shade her eyes. Ooh, it's darker than I thought. We're gonna fix that in a sec. All right, grab some paper towel. 
There we go. We got a little bit of shade there. And I think I'll go ahead and do another layer on the bottoms. And I'm going to use the color called Fairy Tale, which is sort of a fuchsia, but not really. That's another thing. Like three of the colors are really similar. So it just seems like a waste on a palette that's already really limited for space. And they handle pretty much like the Tropical set from uh, Primo Marketing. And I actually really liked that set. I thought that was all right. And can you tell who did not go to the beach this year and who is thinking beachy thoughts? It would be me. All right, let's go in with that fairy tale color. Do a stripe up here towards the top of the blanket. And let's see. I'm gonna have to, of course, keep do working on our skin and stuff. Have not forgotten. For some reason, I'm just doing really good at laying all the colors in. So we're gonna grab some of that ink which is an indigo color. It's gonna desaturate the heck out of anything. And I'm trying to mix a black, you know, maybe I should just go with like, with just indigo or like indigo with some, they call it royal, but we would call it dioxine violet. So we're gonna give her hair that's basically gonna read like a very, very dark color, but we wanna start with our highlight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an all over or almost all over layer with this color we just mixed. And we're gonna leave a paper white highlight, like a rim light around her hair. And I'm gonna zoom in because I know you guys can't see that. And I apologize. All right, and we're just gonna let all of this dry. All right, guys, so I think she is about dry. Zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm gonna grab a couple of smaller brushes. Don't quite need them yet, but it's nice to have them when you need them. Uh, actually, you know what? We will go ahead, move down to a size three. Grab some of that blue. I'm sorry, butterfly. And I find that for doing water without reference and just kind of generic, non-specific water, doing this sort of like stroking motion to indicate waves is really effective for conveying water fairly simply. And we can also use some clean water if we want and soften some of those edges. And then we're gonna grab some of that sand color we mixed a while back. And I'll zoom in a little more so you guys can see what I do. But I like to use fairly simple movements and not over render it. Very similar to what I do for the water. All right, and give that a chance to dry. And then I'm gonna do another layer on her skin, but I can actually go ahead and work a little bit on that ice cream cone. So I'm gonna grab some of the yellow and some of the red, which makes a very peachy color, which would actually be a really good blush for her. So I'll use that as a base tone, but then I'm gonna go in and use that as sort of a base blush tone for her. Oh, and I got some of the blue into her hand because I wasn't being careful enough. It's fine, not a big deal. All right, and let that dry as well. All right, that's had a chance to dry. So we're going to go in and do, let's do Mystic, which is a purple for that final stripe. And so far, we only really have like one layer going and there's not a lot of like 
uh, glazing going on. So right now the colors are all really vivid. It's They're fairly easy to work with. Um, I'm kind of surprised actually, because I thought it was going to be more like uh, the Prima Marketing Classic set, which I was able to use, but I found it frustrating to use. And I didn't enjoy it as much as I liked their Tropical set. This one is a little bit better, but still kind of a weird collection of colors. Like it's kind of choice that I am doing like a warm influence sunny scene because if I were trying to do say like I don't know an ice palace or something um I would be kind of hard pressed because the cool options in this set are not really good and um while I do understand that like Jane Davenport does other sets the the Jane Davenport watercolors are like 30 bucks unless you get them on sale that's a for non-professional grade watercolors it's a lot of money to pay not to have colors you can use. And I know she has other sets as well. Um, and they're all, to me as an artist, they're all kind of weird because um, there isn't really just like a good fundamental set. You have like her neutral set and you have the brights. And I think there's like a set with golds in it or maybe that's the neutrals. But um, in order to get the colors you need, just basic mixing colors, you have to, you could spend if you're not, you know, taking advantage of like your Michaels deals. And unfortunately you can really only get the Jane Davenport uh, watercolors through Michaels. You can't get them on Amazon. Uh, in order to get a a working collection, I guess, of her watercolors, if you wanted to, to be brand loyal, you would end up having to spend like $70. And if you're going to spend that much, you might as well just get the Windsor and Newton watercolors or some of the other watercolors that are on the market. And they seem to be the same watercolors, or at least uh, the same manufacturer that's doing the Prima marketing watercolors. And those are much less expensive, except for the really popular sets, which are like the sets with all the gold. Um, and I don't even know if those are any good and I'm not gonna buy them. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy them. If I want to buy uh, gold paints, I go and get the fine text because those are phenomenal. So little tangent there, but I'm just really surprised by like how hard it can be to use some of the colors in these palettes. Like I guess if I was coloring like some very simple stamps, these would be fine palettes to use. Um, or if I was doing like really simple, um, just like cactuses or beach blankets or, you know, like really basic one or two color stuff, one or two layer things, um, this would be a fine palette. But like even, even with her, the stamps she sells to go with it, like this isn't aimed at artists. So I don't know that the quote unquote color institute, cause I've been on her blog, um, I don't really know that she provides enough information on color theory to prepare her customer base to use her product. If that makes sense. So it's sort of like a weird, I just think it's, I just think it's weird, like all over the place, weird. Weird for so many reasons, weird. So we're gonna let that dry and I'm going to go into ink and just do a full layer and I'm going to leave some rim lighting to indicate the sun hitting a glossy object and we're going to give actually I can work on the blanket but that's like a lot of products that are aimed at crafters but it's like I want to call it like crafters plus so like crafters who are also art journalists who would like to learn how to watercolor um and there's nothing wrong with that i really want to encourage those of you who are watching this because you want to learn how to watercolor i really want to make that accessible to you and i feel like these sort of products sometimes take advantage of the fact that you guys might not have um a background to know what's a good deal and what isn't a good deal which is why I review them. Um, like I said, uh, I keep talking about the tropical set. Um, sometimes you can end up with a product that, you know, just a price change suddenly cha makes it go from like, this is a terrible deal to this is a good deal. Ah, I got greedy. You know what? I'll just let it blend. 
All right, so this has had a chance to dry. We're gonna, you know, I kind of want to make that skin tone darker, but I'm also kind of afraid to right now. So what we're gonna do is mostly because I had to mix multiple colors to get that blend and I don't know that I can do it again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the shadow color and I'll pull out so you guys can see it. And I do need to go get a clean glass of water. My water has definitely got a purpley tinge to it, which is okay for what we're doing because we're literally gonna mix some purples in there. So we're gonna grab some of that color Mystic, which is sort of a red violet and a little bit of Royal. And then we're gonna grab a lot of Frida. And of course, then we're gonna swatch it because that's what you do. ABS, always be swatching, and that looks like it will work. Start getting all the areas that would be in cast shadow. So I was sort of thinking for 2018, uh, I want to try a couple of things that I don't really do on this channel. One, I was thinking about maybe doing um, different types of challenges. And I don't mean like cheap art supplies, that sort of stuff, because I've reviewed so many of those over on the blog. I <laughs> don't know if I have it in me. And as part of Burn It Box, um, I don't know if I have it in me to do those sort of challenges, but more like prompt based challenges or request based drawing videos. Um, of course, that would require some engagement engagement from you guys and some suggestions and some participation. And one of the things I was thinking about with that is doing it as a maybe like a weekly or every two week stream. And uh, originally I wanted to do that for just backers, but I was thinking um, just maybe making it open to the public, whoever wants to hang out, because I've started doing streams while I'm at cons and it's been a lot of fun, actually. I really enjoy that. And I have Ape coming up and I will probably do a stream at some point during Ape as well. Cause I don't know, there's just something really fun about being able to bring some of the convention experience to people who couldn't make it or maybe live in another country. There's all sorts of reasons why people can't be there. So um, if you guys like that idea of me doing request-based streams, you need to let me know in the comments. And I also want to do more collaborations and that means I need people willing to collaborate with me. So. That is also something. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing in, in watching those sort of videos. And also let me know if you'd be interested in collaborating with me. And I'm interested um, so far, because I've never really done it, I'd be interested in giving it a shot with anybody who's interested. So, you know, crafters or LPs, um, fellow artists, just anybody, or maybe even um, like lifestyle and parent YouTube channels parenting YouTube channels, maybe even like ASM artists. And I'm mixing a blush color. And I don't even necessarily, I know um, it's like common YouTube advice not to collaborate with anybody who is less po uh, popular than you are. And uh, I'm pretty low on the totem pole, which is preventing me from approaching anybody about it. But you know, I kind of don't, doesn't really bother me anymore. I don't really care. And I just think it would be fun and a great way to meet other artists. So um, even if you have fewer subs than I do, because I know these days it's getting really hard to get anybody to notice you on YouTube. But if you would like to collaborate with me, um, you can email me or email would probably be better than hitting me up in the comments, because at least with email, I have like a searchable way to keep track of that. Uh, so right now I'm adding a little bit of blush using Ladybug and Buzzy. So, ooh, well, we'll let it dry. We'll see. It'll diffuse. Maybe that'll turn out okay. Actually, I'm really interested in collaborating with crafters because I've never collaborated with any. So open to, but I also haven't collaborated with any um, video game LPers. So that would also be pretty cool. 
or if you're not a YouTuber uh, and you have like a web comic or like, you know, an Instagram that you update pretty frequently and you know, you have a sizable like a thousand or so, but I would be willing to negotiate lower um, followers on there. I would totally love to work something out and collaboration wise with that as well just interested this sh upcoming year and growing in new ways making new friends and trying new things while hopefully maintaining some of the old things like the blog and my webcomic seven inch Kara and my work with Ink Drop Cafe definitely don't want to drop the ball with those Also, and I've mentioned this before, I'd really like to do round robin reviews where um, a product goes around several artists and everybody sort of gives their feedback on it. I think that would be really cool and very helpful. Um, maybe a little difficult to sort of um, arrange because it is a, a significant amount of time you're asking another artist to dedicate. Um, possibly for free. And it also requires like editing knowledge, that sort of stuff. So it may not be super feasible. And I couldn't afford to send a copy or a, um, not a copy, uh, a product to every single person. So it would have to be like an actual round robin where I send it to one and then that person passes it on to the next creator. So maybe we should pick one and that's the thing we, you know, we spend the year doing that, I guess. It'd be pretty cool also to see what everybody comes up with. All right, so her face is very pink. Let's see if we can lift some of that on the nose. All right, so not a whole lot of lifting capability with these paints. That's both good and bad because they're gonna stay where you put them, but they're gonna stay where you put them. You can't correct them. All right, so go ahead and do another layer on the arm, just this arm, because we're going to use this to sort of build up a lot of contrast. And under here as well. In fact, I actually have, and honestly, by the time this video is edited, it will not be live anymore. But I have a video on my Patreon asking what people want to see and it's open to the public and it will probably be closed by the time this video goes live. But if there's something from that list that you guys um, that didn't make it um, and that you guys would like to see, please let me know that as well. So I'm going to let this dry. That has had a chance to dry a little bit. I'm going to... Go ahead and mix up a shadow color for the pinks. It's a little darker than I wanted, but hopefully it will dry a little lighter. And I can always do a glaze on top of it. Anyway, add some, some tone to the, some shadow to the, sorry, the bathing suit. And then to the beach blanket down at the bottom as well. And grab a little color, add to the ice cream cone. And then grab some more of Butterfly. Add that to the water. There we go. And probably add a little more purple to that skin shadow color because it's a little light. It's a little bit better. So lately I have been working on my Society of Children's Book Writer and Illustrator. I always have to think about that. Um, I've been working on my contest entry for that and getting my portfolio in order. And also it's a little dark for the face. Also, I've been working on Kara pages. And if you're interested, you guys can keep up with some of that over on my Instagram. I like sharing my progress. Although I think it scares some people off. They don't, they don't want to see that. Because I lost some followers from the last batch. 
I'm sorry if it is a bit monotonous. I like seeing how that kind of stuff comes together. I know some people are not super interested in that. So it's been a lot of uh, sort of drafting up a story, designing characters, thumbnails, roughs, that sort of thing. I'm recording some of it for you guys. Um, and some of it is just easier and turns out better if I just work on it kind of in private and not share it. So I've been doing both. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's what I've been working on. And then I have Ape coming up. And by the time this goes live, Ape will already have happened. So I'm flying out to San Jose slash San Francisco to do that. And that is an indie comic show. And my table partner and I won the best booth competition last year. So we're going to be giving a panel on table design. Hmm, so let's zoom in here. That purple that we added to her bikini, it re and I used the warmer purple, Mystic, on top of that hot pink color, Best Friend. Um, it really neutralized and made the color look chalky. And that could be because of the optical brighteners in Best Friend, sometimes super bright fluorescence, and my camera can't really capture how pink this is. Sometimes really bright fluorescent watercolor colors have um, optical brighteners in them, which is basically like talc or chalk, um, just to make it seem more vivid than it really is. And then when you try to glaze over it, it does like that weird um, chalky look to it because chalk is used as an optical brightener. Um, so, that is definitely, I mean, that was a concern when um, I did the unboxing video. I think I mentioned to you guys that these colors probably do not layer very well. That's, that's I want to say cheap, but they weren't cheap watercolor. I mean, they're not expensive watercolors either, but they're not really a good value. In fact, I have um, a Kuratake set and a Lucas set, which are of comparable price. And I've used the Kuratake set for years and I really like it. And I need to pull it out and do a video on it so you guys can see it. Um, and the Lucas set, I need to get a, go ahead and swatch. But there are other, like there's student grade watercolor sets that are available. They aren't marketed to crafters, but they are perfect for crafters um, that are a better deal. They're better pigments and they're more affordable than these. And I've also been reviewing watercolors and watercolor papers at natosoup.blogspot.com as part of the um, my watercolor basic series. So if you're interested in learning how to watercolor, you're interested in purchasing the materials and you don't know where to start and me talking about the quality of the Jane Davenport watercolors is making you a little bit anxious about getting maybe taken advantage of, you can head on over there. And maybe by the end of the year, I'll have a nice comprehensive, I mean, with watercolors, they're in general expensive enough that I can't really afford to do a full comprehensive of all the really nice artist quality brands. Although I can talk about Windsor Newton Core, Daniel Smith and Holbein but there's also like all these neat little um, sort of people who are hand making their own watercolors on Instagram and then selling those. And those are super tempting because it combines like three things that I think are really cool. Art supplies that are made by individuals that are artist quality. Um, things made in the traditional method and then also s supporting small businesses, especially small businesses run by artists. That's really cool. Um, so maybe I will get a set for Christmas, but probably not. Anyway, I'm going to let this dry. All right, guys, that's had a moment to dry. We're going to go in and I want to use a softer brush with this. So we've got a squirrel hair brush here. We're going to go into best friend 
which is, well, I think Starling, Sterling Archer would call me out on freezing for that. Um, and we're going to gently glaze another layer hopefully uh, help remedy some of that desaturation. And then we're gonna go into fairy tale, do the same thing. And I'm gonna hold that down so that can dry and not get all kipped up. All right, she's trying to be careful so we can see her teeth. Might be able to avoid the white gouache for this one, but might not be able to. We'll see. All right, guys, that has somewhat dried. It will dry to be a better color than it currently is. And I just want to make it clear, if you have this set, if you have these watercolors, I'm not in any way slamming you or your abilities to create whatever you want to create with this set. This review is simply for those who are curious about the set and are wondering if it is worth the money to help them make a decision that is right for them. I see people use all sorts of art materials for all sorts of things. And I'm always impressed by what people can do with it. But I just, it bo really bothers me, I guess, when people overpay. So I'm, ow, sorry, I have a cat in my lap right now. Um, so I, that's where I'm coming from. Just trying to help you guys make decisions that are good for you and for your your needs and if you have that 15% off 50% off coupon which Michaels often does I mean you're paying 15 for this palette that is much more reasonable it's much more affordable it's not for 15 it's not a bad palette but for 30 I like I said earlier in the video I think there are better options so please don't take this as a slam My intention isn't to insult any other creator or creative, but I will totally rag on companies all the time because companies are not people. And I have zero loyalty to companies. Good grief, his cat will not sit still and he's digging into my legs. And those of you who watch my channel have met him before. It is Bowie being a butt like you do. He's too big for my lap, but you try telling him that. Right, so other than allowing her skin tone, which is finally just about right to dry, we just need to finish up her hair. All right, guys, we are reaching the finish line. The pink on her bikini bottom does still need to dry, but we can progress. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of that ink color, and then I'm gonna grab a bunch of that royal color. I love letting the brush do the work, especially when it is behaving decently well. This brush here is, so it makes painting hair a lot of fun. And note, I am leaving a lot of rim lighting. I'm also leaving a lot of that light blue color. And if you guys want a tutorial or a series of tutorials on rendering cartoony hair with watercolor and marker, let me know that in the comments below. All right, she's looking pretty good so far. Going to go wet into wet, work in a little bit of darker color. What's neat about this is in some areas, the paint will have already dried, so you're gonna get a dry onto wet effect. And then in some areas, 
the paint is still wet and you're gonna get a diffused bloom, which makes for a really cool effect. All right, looking really good. All right, so I think I am gonna use just a little bit of white gouache, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let this dry fully before I can do that. So I may end up letting it dry overnight. We will see. So this has had a chance to dry overnight and I'm going to bring in another player here. We're gonna use a little bit of white gouache just to add some highlights. Go in with the skin tone really quick. Just use it here and there to add a little more depth. And then a little white gouache. All right, and we're just about done. So my thoughts on the Jane Davenport Brights palette. I like it a little bit better than the Primo Marketing Classics palette. I find that these colors are a little easier to use. I don't like it as much as I like the Primo Marketing Tropicals palette. And I think they're probably buying their paints from the same manufacturer because they have the same working properties, the same texture, um, the same sort of uh, fallbacks. Though I guess I need to look into that and let you guys know, and that's probably gonna be hard information to find if we're being honest. Um, would I pay full price for this? No, I did not pay full price for this and I wouldn't pay $30. I did buy it with a 50% off coupon from Michaels. And if you're interested in getting into watercolor and you watch me work with this palette and you're like, oh, I love those colors. I could use those colors all the time then I recommend, sure, why not? Um, there are other palettes that are better suited towards mixing skin tones, mixing objects on the market. Um, even your basic, and I'm, I haven't tested this, so this isn't a recommendation, but even sort of your basic 12 color palette with your warm yellow, your cool yellow, your warm red, your cool red, etc. And this actually has 12 colors, so it's got more than that. Um, this is gonna give you a better mixing range than this palette will. Notice I didn't really mix any browns other than the skin tone and the cone. Um, and that was because I knew it was gonna be kind of a stretch with this palette to mix skin uh, browns. That's why her hair is like blue black which I mean, it's fine, it's a beautiful color. I'm just saying that um, browns are not an easy thing to mix with this color, uh, this palette. You would, um, a yellow ochre would help, a burnt umber would help, a sepia would help, a black would help. Um, but of course, you know, it's a 12 color palette. Now there is room here. You could put in um, pans of your own. They, it doesn't have to be theirs. You can get empty half pans online. You can get empty half pans through Jerry's Artorama and fill them with the paints of your choice. But we're talking about this palette as is. So I hope this field test was helpful to you guys. I hope it was inspiring. I hope it was able to answer some questions you might have had about the Jane Davenport Brights palette. I hope you guys have a great day and please keep an eye on this channel for even more art supply reviews. So have a great day guys. Bye.